Hello, I'm um, <clears throat> doing a video because I was tagged by Barklord uh, to do this video about books that have had a profound influence on my life and books that I'm reading now. The only reason I'm responding to this track, this tag, is because I, I happen to like Barklord. I think he's a, he does intelligent videos, very thoughtful videos, and he strikes me as being a very authentic individual. In fact, I've left a, a link to his page in the underbar, and I recommend that you subscribe to him. I think he, he's worth subscribing to. Uh, Bark Lord, uh, books have had a profound influence on me. In fact, I would say that uh, some of the most formative influences, uh, changes in my life, and influences in my life have been the, re uh, uh, the result of books, either occasioned by books uh, or um, reinforced uh, by books in some, some fashion. Um, <clears throat> when, I was, um, when I was quite young, about seven, eight years of age, there was an illness in my family, and um, without going into too many details, uh, that the illness of my family meant that I wasn't able to go outside and play very often with the kids in the neighborhood. Uh, I had to stay in the house to help attend to the ill family member um, and had to be available, basically, uh, to do that. And so uh, I started reading to fill up my time. Um, reading voraciously for, you know, for for a young child and um, you know I don't want to be boastful but I was a, a precocious reader um, in, in many ways um, and so I my interests at first were rather provincial and I started reading history books particularly American history books and my chief interest was the Revolutionary War period now I can remember at a quite young age never being very comfortable with the veneration of the founders who owned slaves. Um, never feeling very comfortable about that. Um, but there were of course some uh, exceptional founders, um, the ones that I really liked and enjoyed uh, reading about particularly. One was Thomas Paine. Um, I thought he was incredible uh, founder, um, and enjoyed reading about what he thought and in his life and so on. In fact, I happen to have a book here uh, called Thomas Paine, Apostle of Freedom by Jack uh, Fruchtman Jr. It's, you know, if you're reading about Thomas Paine, this is a good book to read. Um, it's really quite good. Um, American history, particularly the Revolutionary War period, is an abiding interest for me. I recently read this book, The Loyalists, by Christopher Moore. Perhaps, as you know, the Loyalists were um, the other side uh, um, from the Patriots during the Revolutionary War period. They were the ones who wanted to remain faithful to the English crown. And that book is about... Um, uh, what they experienced. Uh, I read that book, The Loyalists, quite recently. But that book's about what they experienced, the, the kinds of abuses that they had undergone, pretty incredible abuses that they experienced uh, by the Patriots. Uh, so it's a very interesting work. Uh, but if you want a, um, <coughs> a rather no-nonsense history of... Uh, of, of the United States, a sort of general history of the United States, then I would recommend Howard Zinn's A People's History of the United States. This is a tremendous book. Um, it certainly disabuses one of the, um, the official version of American history and uh, it shows what American history was like from the perspective of the disenfranchised in the United States. Which have um, which have existed in, in rather large numbers throughout 
U.S. history, uh, which is one of the things that Zen shows, I think, quite quite convincingly and admirably. When I was a little older, I remember going to a um, a library and they had a book sale going on of some books they were getting rid of, and I picked up an anthology of writings by anarchists. I was about, oh, I don't know, 12, 13 at the time, maybe. And I can't remember the name of the book. I wish I could, but um, but the book had a profound influence on me, even though at the time, lacking the historical and philosophical background, I didn't fully comprehend all the issues that the anarchists uh, discussed. Nevertheless, I was um, I was jolted by the idea that society could function, perhaps even thrive, without an imposed social order of any kind, um, but could order itself. And that order could result from a network of cooperative relationships based on mutual interests. And I just thought that was an absolutely fascinating idea. And it's there I first learned the names of like Bakunin and Goldman and Kropotkin. Um, and although I didn't stick with the interests uh, with those anarchists, with those anarchists at the time, although I didn't follow up on it, I never had forgotten it. It always was sort of in the back of my mind, and always I always had a sympathy for the anarchists. I especially remember reading in that anthology uh, at the time a uh, an account by Josiah Warren about the Cincinnati Time Store, which was some kind of enterprise put on by. Um, by anarchists. And the reason that really left a lasting impression on me is because I was from the Cincinnati area and I was you know, reading this account uh, in that area. So um, that was another big influence on me at the time. One that would later fructify into to my own sort of political affiliations. In my late teens to early adulthood, I went through a uh, religious phase, and it w I uh, was raised in a sort of conservative religious background, and I um, went through a religious conversion, but I was nevertheless an odd duck religiously. Um, however religious I was, I always thought that ev evolution was evidently true even though I was completely surrounded by creationists. Um, another thing that um, uh, made me a bit of an odd duck was that although I thought that the story of the incarnation of Christ was a beautiful tale, I never understood the necessity of the death of Jesus for the remission of sins. That, that entire schema seemed arbitrary to me. And uh, so I never really felt comfortable with that. So because of that doubt and others that I was developing, I suppose I was destined to leave the faith, which I did. And some writers really helped me in that process, like um, Lessing or and Bertrand Russell, uh, David Hume, particularly his work on miracles, Mark Twain, David Friedrich Strauss's book, The Life of Jesus Critically Examined, in which he shows that the whole entire life of Jesus could be uh, was written out of um, motifs found very clearly in the Old Testament, and also, um, interestingly enough, just reading the Bible, seeing the contradictions that existed there, not being able to find any um, um, plausible and believable answers uh, to what I saw as contradictions. Um, helped me to to leave that faith. Now philosophy has had a huge influence on me. Um, I've mostly studied in the analytic and linguistic tradition of philosophy. So writers like uh, Bertrand Russell, uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein, his book uh, Tractatus was almost like a religious experience for me at the time I read it. Uh, Willard Quine has had an influence. I liked his style. I liked the degree and extent of his skepticism. 
uh, though although I never bought into his nominalism. Saul Kripke's work on natural kinds were big influences on me. Those in the analytic and linguistic tradition often look askance at the phenomenological and existential traditions um, and um, I, I never really bought into that entirely. Um, I um, I read, did some reading in the, that tradition. I'm not as expert as a lot of others are, but um, but I enjoyed Sartre, for example. In fact, I may be one of the only few people alive who's read Being and Nothingness twice. Um, so um, so I, I I I have read in that tradition and found it quite interesting. Uh, so mostly, it's fair to say that 20th century. Uh, philosophical writers have influenced me the most. Now, while I was in grad school in philosophy, epistemology uh, preoccupied most of my time there. Although, towards the end of my grad school experience, I developed an interest in psychology, and particularly in the philosophy of psychology. My master's thesis, in fact, involved a philosophical examination of the writings of Freud and Abraham Maslow on a particular subject. Writers that have influenced me in the psychological tradition are William James, um, the um, psychiatrist and hypnotist uh, Milton Erickson, um, um, the founder of the existential psychotherapeutic school of thought, um, Viktor Frankl, uh, the post Jungian James Hillman, and, uh, and also I remember. Um, Driving a great deal of benefit in terms of helping me understand what I th thought I saw in the world um, in others was a book by David Shapiro called uh, Neurotic Styles. In my mid to late 30s, uh, I developed an interest in poetry. Now, I never fully grasped how poetry is a form of highly intensified speech, a, a kind of speech that requires a, um, an exe exegetical uh, uh, excavation as well as a leader, linear reading. And I never really fully appreciated that until I went back to grad school in English um, and was in a class uh, on 19th century um, literature. Um, and the professor there uh, read the entire Wreck of the Deutschland in class out loud um, by Jared Manley Hopkins. And um, I remember asking him after he got reading it, yeah, but what does it mean? So what he did is he went through and he unpacked line by line what the wreck of the Deutschland was, was like, what it was about. And, and I got it. I, ha I remember having the gestalt shift where I understood, oh, that's how you read poetry. Now, I could understand poetry that had just a pretty transparent surface meaning, but, but um, poetry that resonated on a level of depth um, I, I really had difficulty with until he showed me how you how you do it, and so I've been forever indebted to that um, that particular professor. Uh, influential poets for me that I've read uh, include uh, Rilke, Wallace Stevens, T. S. Eliot, the Mexican poet Octavia Paz, more contemporaneously Jory Graham and Charles Wright. There's probably been a few others, um, but, um, but mostly them. I've written poetry. Uh, I've had you know, a fair number of my poems published. Uh, I've, I've won two grants in poetry. Uh, so poetry's had a tremendous influence on me. However, I haven't been able to write a word of poetry since sometime soon after the USA invaded Iraq under what is we all know now and I knew at the time was transparently false pretenses. 
Now, since the Iraq War, I've developed an intense interest in, in local national politics. I've also been developing an interest in issues about social and economic justice. It's an interest that has required me to get involved. So I often spend my time now reading studies and analyses of various issues, and most of the study I do is centered on issues of wealth inequality and bettering the lives of working people and, and the disadvantaged. In fact, I'm often hired by groups and organizations uh, to provide these kinds of analyses and to act as a consultant to them on these, ma these and other matters. So much of my reading now, in my research, is centered on these matters and concerns. But I am able f uh, to find some time to read books. Uh, they've mostly been books about political theory. Um, that's got me to read The Anarchists again, uh, quite extensively. One, in, one contemporary anarchist that uh, has had a tremendous influence on me is Noam Chomsky. As a matter of fact, for a few years I had a radio program and I interviewed uh, Chomsky once. I devel I've developed an on and off again correspondence with him. Just one of the friendliest, most approachable, genuine people um, that I've ever met. Uh, and I did get to meet him one time in uh, Philadelphia when he came there to give a talk. Um, I, I imagine his most influential book and most important book is Manufacturing Consent. I think a person could make that case. Um, but the book that I really enjoy the most is um, Language and Politics, which explores the intersection of his um, his philosophy, his linguistics, and politics, where it does intersect. It doesn't always intersect, as he's quick to point out. Um, uh, but where it does, um, this book, which is a series of articles, as I recall, maybe some interviews as well, um, um, explores that intersection. I find that, I find that quite fascinating. Um, what you also ask is what, what, what I'm reading now. Well, I'm reading... Um, I don't have it here, I don't think. No, I don't. Um, a book called Socialism, a very short introduction. I like this book. I picked it up in a bookstore uh, because it, um, it explores 20th century uh, socialism. It, it has a very good discussion on social democracy in Sweden. And also compares and contrasts it with the socialism that you find in Cuba. I'm also reading on my phone, which is here somewhere, um, because it's free. Actually, I should say I'm rereading it. It's, it is Thus Spake Zarathustra. I plan on doing a video about it, but um, I actually, the I, uh, only thing I'll say about reading Nietzsche is that I, I find Nietzsche to be generally abhorrent. Um, and a, um, a kind of craven egotist. Um, I'm also reading the book What We Owe Each Other by T.M. Scanlon. I've just started to read this book. Scanlon uh, has a kind of contractualist view of ethics. His thesis is that right is wrong, right and wrong is calculated in terms of what we do that can be justified to others and which they could not reasonably reject. It's kind of an interesting notion. I don't have much to say about it now. Perhaps I will do a video about it later when I'm done reading it. Um, but it's a fascinating book. He's a philosopher. Oh, I'm reading this, uh, bo this book-length poem by Thomas McGrath called Letter to an Imaginary Friend. Um, McGrath was a poet and radical, and um, actually lost his job because of his um, his socialist views. Uh, and I'm reading this biographical poem, which is actually quite quite good. Um, so that's what I'm reading, and thank you very much for for your interest in it, and. Um, Appreciate it. Bye.